Okay, thank you, Kim. Thank you for attending. I'm Paul. In this talk, we will glass over the current rix LPMP proposal. <clears throat> Uh, this is my biography. Today's talk will be split into four parts. Firstly, I will briefly introduce why we need IOPMB. Then we will spend some time on the main idea of the current IOPMB proposal. In the third part, I list some profile that could help user to configure their IOPMBs. At the end of the talk, I will list some works to do in the near future. So why do we need IOPMB? Mm, vulnerability of platforms gives hackers a chance to access sensitive data or manipulate devices. If we can check every transition on the platform, we could stop a lot of such attacks. Inside a Rixify heart, we have the PMP in charge of regulating transition issue from it. And the IOPMP is designed to regulate the rest of transition, the transition issue from the other bus master. For more introduction, you could refer this video that was shown at the 2020 Rix Rix5 Summit. Uh, the current proposal has three major ideas. The first one is to provide several options to fit various requirements on different platforms, including IRT, MPU, and more complicated platforms. And then it is uh, profile-based. It provides several common profiles to help users to configure their IOPMBs. Even though a variety of options and profiles, we would want to maintain the software portability. It's an important topic for an ecosystem. Thus, we want to define some rules for this purpose. Before entering the main structure, I would like to talk about the memory domain briefly. A memory domain is a group of memory region for a specific purpose. I use Wi-Fi NIC as an example. A uh, Wi-Fi NIC may have a chunk of receive buffer, a chunk of transmit buffer, and a set of control registers. This is memory regions constitute a memory domain. Every memory domain has an ID, MDID, and associated with a group of IOPMP entries. These entries are used to define the above region and their permissions. Under the idea, the software stake manages memory domains instead of individual IOPMP entries, which it grants a particular function to an execution environment or revokes it. It's several admission control from region definition, which improve the software abstraction. This profile is profile-based. Uh, this is maxima one, the full profile. When a transition is issued from a bus master, like this, it's carrier a source ID, the ID indicate who issued the transition. By the IP mapping table, the IOPMP looks up the memory domain by the source ID when the transition arrival and IOPMP. Since the table is encoded in bit mapped scheme, one society can have associated with multiple memory domains. It means a bus master is allowed to access the regions belong to different functions. A memory domain has a group of IOPMPs, which are defined by the search window. By the search window, we can retrieve relevant entries from the entry array. And then we can check permission for the transition from these entries. The search window used MDX top register to indicate which entry belong to the memory domain X. And MD top register is the index of the top entry for a memory domain. 
it works like a TOR entry in a PMP. By above definition, we maintain the property that a lower order memory domain has higher priority, just like PMP entry. Uh, in this example, we demonstrate a data pass over a full profile IOPMP. The full profile is designed for an IOPMP with a large entry array. So we may use SRAN to store the array. The address matrix is engine to check if any entry matches the address of an incoming transition within two to three entries. It found that the address matcher looks up the entry with highest priority. It is usually the biggest, largest component in an IOPMP and the major concern relate to the area. <clears throat> when an MDID is looked up from the ID mapping table, it's split into higher R bits and the lower C bits. The higher R bits are row index. It used to fetch the first row belong to the memory domain from the entry array. And then store it in the row buffer, which has two to C entries. Then the lower C bit construct a column mask that is used to disable unselected entry before row entering the address matrix. The address matrix can simultaneously look up a row of entry. If an entry is found, it's check the permission of the transition. If not found, it goes over again to the next row until the last row of the memory domain. We should note the number of iteration doesn't rely on the size of the uh, entry array. It depends on how many entry belong to the memory domain. And it usually relies on the property of a function instead of how many bus master on the platform. Since the data pass can be implemented in a pipeline style manner, the throughput is bounded by the capacity of the address matrix. Even we we may want to reduce the first bubble in the pipeline. A speculated prefetch or a cache could help. Well, uh, we will not discuss it deeper today. In this implementation, we can adjust R and C to choose the capacity of the address matrix for different requirements. The wider window, the higher throughput, but also the higher cost. Another good thing is that the R and C are transparent to the, to the software. That is, when facing different performance requirements, we can run the same program. However, the full profile is not designed to apply everywhere. When we have smaller design or lower latency requirements, we want to consider using different profiles. This is profiles bypass one or two tables. Now we have a rapid K profile for smaller platform or the lower latency requirement. The compact K profile is for an even smaller system. The isolation profile is good for the system where most of memory region used by different bus master are isolated. When integrating multiple existing system into one, we could also consider using this profile. We still have many works to do. Today, we only go through the main structurally brief, briefly. Uh, we will subsequently work on the protection of IOPMP itself. We should prevent IOPMP from unexpected modification. More detail regarding to a spec should be also provided, such as uh, registered bit fears, error handling, and so on. We also think of the distributed IOPMP that could be useful for an even larger system. We welcome more experts to join us to come up with a better IOPMP spec. Thank you for attending this session.
If you have any question about my presentation or want to participate in our IOPMP discussion, you can also send it to the TEE task group or connect with Andy's technology. Thank you.